Hi, Peter. Hello. Do you know what today is? Today's Friday. Today is Friday what? 13th. Today is Friday the 13th. And ladies and gentlemen, on Friday the 13th, it's a very superstitious day. It is. All right? You never know what's going to happen. Peter could turn to a zombie. Get abducted. Ladies and gentlemen, all I can promise is that you're going to want to watch this video. Let's leave it at that. But, Peter, you got to get yourself some new boots. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Mike? Yes. How are you? I'm Cyrus. Hi, Cyrus. How are you? Good. How are you? Peter? How are you? Good. Need to run the back? Sure. <clears throat> the uh, team is right on the driveway. Okay, very good. Thank you. Do, 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 do. Yep. So we are here for a, as a referral, a uh, gentleman was told by his HVAC company that his air conditioning system has a refrigerant leak, and uh, we're here to verify that because um, he doesn't believe them. I got my new Brunts on. They're very nice, I'm comfortable. This is my second pair. They're very comfortable. You need some new Timberlands, though. Got the Lux Airs. Micro channel coils, let me guess. I'm sorry? I said you have micro channel coils on these systems. Which are inherently, they're prone for leaks. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But, you know, they probably were put in by your builder when you did the house. Yeah, when we built the house, um, I'll, I'll give you the whole background, which Mike said I should give you all the details. You know, Good. the builder's a great guy. Yep. Whoever he used, he used. You know, they gave me their service card. Um, that's the upstairs unit. Okay, the one floor. on the left. Okay. <clears throat> this is the one that's giving me a little grief on the lower level. Okay, what's it doing? So... I, it's it's not holding the, the Freon or whatever you guys call it, refrigerant. Refrigerant, yeah, right? that's good. <clears throat> yeah, good. So what happened was uh, everything was hunky-dory for years. And um, I had a generator installed. I don't know if you saw it when you walked well, in. Well, I see the, the switch with the outlet for it over there. Well, that was before I had the permanent generator installed. So I have a permanent generator installed. And um, about three months after they were done, I noticed that it was late August. This unit wasn't cooling. I called the ser the guy, the service company that uh, installed it. Okay. They charged it. With refrigerant. <clears throat> so it was low. How long ago was this? So that's August. I looked it up last night for you. It was August of uh, 2021. Okay. Right? So a little <clears throat> over two years ago. It got me through till I would say September of 22. Okay, a year and a little over a year. So I call them. How much did they add? I'd have to go back. And okay. That's above my uh, memory Pay grade? Bank, so. <laughs> yeah, that too. Okay. So, so uh, I, go back, I go back and I uh, call them and he said, you know what, let's deal with it in the spring. You probably have a week off. We'll look for it in the spring. And I thought that was reasonable. You know, it was the end of the season. So I call them in the spring. Now it's March, whatever. No, I'm sorry, April of 23. Mm -hmm. And he sent somebody, the daily got here. We're in a rush. We're really busy. I'm going to charge the system. We'll see how it goes, but I can't look for the lead. I said, wait a minute. The owner, I spoke to him. I'm not like that stupid. He told me, you're going to come in the spring, look for the lead. Why are you charging it to walk out? He goes, because we're busy. I said, and you'll never be back. So he charged the system. How many pounds? That I could look up for you. I know we okay. wrote it down. I, he said it was empty, whatever that means. Okay, I'm these are flat. These are, I believe, three and a half tons each. Well, that's a three. I didn't check that one, but that's three and a half tons. Forty-two thousand BTUs. I think they're both three and a half tons. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm not going to call this guy back who didn't have time for me. I've used him. I, I've never called anybody else. He installed it. I thought he was a yeah. good guy. For his defense, though, he got busy. For his defense, we're all equally as guilty of that. Not However, you're here at eight o'clock. You said no, you'd no, be here no, between no. eight and ten. Oh, exactly. Mike, said, Mike Garen said you'd be here early. <laughs> right. But, but we're, we're all, all of us are guilty of the same thing. When, when we have, you know, 50 service calls in the schedule that day, and we go to a house and it's needs it's refrigerant, uh, it, it's always easy. And if I think it's right. I didn't have time to sweep up the leaves yet, but I will. Oh, next time, you know what? We're going to add to the bill. I but I got to tell you, they definitely muscled these two conduits through the duct through these, you know, past these uh, suction and I guess one is called suction and one is called something else. High pressure, low pressure, suction, discharge. Um, 
It's this is your, these would be your lines. Like the copper yes. line is right here. I feel yes. it on the other side. A telltale sign of, of a hole or a crack or a, a, a leak on a copper refrigeration line, it would be oil residue. Yeah. And what is that? Uh, that? Okay. I don't know. All right. Well, well guess I'm what? At... I have equipment that we're going to find if it's there or not. All right. So Testo. Is... 557, four port manifold. Everything zeroed out. Peter has removed the straighter core cap on the high and low side. So the straighter valves have been changed. Okay. He's taking the low side hose and putting that onto the 3 8 connection service port. He's got the high side in his hand. And that's going to go to our high side connection. We already got some pressure in there. 140. 14 point 115 psi on our low and the same on the high so we do have some pressure in here however it is undercharged because our ambient temperature is not 38 degrees it is 51 degrees yeah it is it is getting cold out very cold so there are our numbers so if there was a uh a substantial leak would be flat, Zero. nothing. So I think the best thing to do would be to get electronic uh, ultrasonic leak detector. The echo All right, so we removed the condenser fan motor top, disconnected it from the wiring harness, killed a couple of zip ties along the way, took the foam gasket off the top, and removed the compressor insulating blanket for noise reduction. First glance, nothing visible. A little suspect here on the brazing. That does not look factory to me. And nothing there either. So let's use our ultrasonic leak detector. Is that hey? What do I think it is? Uh, yeah, it is. It's a it's a uh, Chinese lantern. Uh, Lantern oh, fly. Jesus God. Of Look at this. Is. What else could go wrong? This is, you know why? It's Friday the 13th. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. my God. Now we're going to call the EPA. <laughs> Peter? Yeah. Is it really what we think it is? I think it is. I think it is, too. I think he looks dead, though. Oh, good. Maybe, bad. you know, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's maybe he got, you know, because refriger refriger refrigerant displaces oxygen. And maybe he had no oxygen to breathe and uh, he died. Is he, is he making the thing leak? That's what I want. I don't know, but I want to get him. Over here, you mother. Oh, he was dead. Oh, look at that. All right. So we checked the entire outdoor unit with the ultrasonic leak detector. We, we even did some soapy water. Um, the line set is buried between the I-beam and the ductwork, and I, I know we have more than 50 feet here, but I can't, if I can't see a coupling on the 3 8 line, like there's one right here, right? Chances are if you see one coupling, you have another one on, on the three-quarter line, but it's buried. We checked the, out, the indoor unit coil, nothing there. Um, so unfortunately, we, can't, we didn't find the leak, but we did recommend um, the sealant with the dye, a recharge system, let it run for half an hour. Let the, the sealant work its way. All right, so system. I just put the condenser fan motor cover back on. And I, you know that I'm going to be that guy on a 50 degree day that sells you a capacitor. Let's test the capacitor. All right, with the system off, we added a total of three pounds. My pressures are in the almost 150, which kind of matched my, our ambient temperature of 53 degrees, which it does. So I have my high and low, high and low service ports closed. They're all closed. We're going to plug this bad boy in, and then we're going to add the sealant and let it run for half an hour. If you, if you, don't close it, you got a little frostbite on your fingers there, Peter? Oh my God, you're shaking. Peter, you're shaking. You okay? You good? Okay. You got... I wish I weighed 75 pounds. Oh, you didn't even put it on yet? Oh, Peter, 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 Peter. And it's on the wrong side goes on the low side all right oh peter okay all right pushing that 
in there. It's closed. Good. Close, close. Let's close the tank. Okay, Peter. Okay. What did you fuck up? <laughs> the UV dye. <laughs> Good. Well, how'd you fuck it up? Just so you know. Wrong side. Wrong side. Okay, there you go. That's where you messed up. Yeah. We almost lost that vial. Yeah. Yeah. That would, that would not have been but you live, you learn. Don't make that mistake again. You good? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday the 13th. It was a blooper. It was a blooper. A blooper. Many you many see? Many. We're all human. We make mistakes. Learn something new every day, ladies and gentlemen. And one thing that I didn't mention on camera is that when you add refrigerant to a system, I have this disclaimer form. You can see that, you can pause, you can look at it. But every time you have a refrigeration system that has a leak on it, uh, to protect yourself, your company, and your homeowner, your client's best interest, right? There are five things you need to explain to them. And that document, which is attached to our form, explains all that. Number one, you know, you have, you can do nothing. If I do nothing, what happens? You have ex excessive operating costs. You have a shortened life expect expectancy on the compressor. You have contamination because moisture will enter in through that negative side, right? That low side. Why not, number two, just add refrigerant? Well, it's like getting a blood transfusion at the hospital or doctor's office, but not actually getting stitched up, right? So there's no guarantee on that either, right? Uh, number three, will a sealant fix my leak? Well. It may or may not, but there's no guarantee, right? Injecting sealants to a system may or may not stop the leak, depending on the type and size of the leak. After a sealant is installed, the AC unit must run for a minimum of an hour. So a sealant, you know, so it could circulate throughout the system. And if the sealant does fail, the refrigerant will leak out once again and the system will stop working. So you have it all right there, right? And then we have, why is having a leak search uh, performed a better option? Because we can actually now look for the leak. And if we look for the leak and repair the leak, that leak will be guaranteed. And last but not least, number five, should I consider replacing my entire system? Boom, there it is. I have a PDF that is this form. If you would like that PDF, I will put a link in the description box down below. You can download it from my Google Drive. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, you can email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. I'll be more than glad to send you that PDF. That way you could further educate yourself, protect yourself, protect your customer, and further edu further educate your customer, the end user. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Be well. God bless. Stay safe. Smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. There's no cost or obligation. I would really appreciate it because we'll be one step closer to the next milestone, which is 150,000 subscribers. Thanks a lot, guys. Happy Friday the 13th. Have a great weekend.